Hello guys, how's it going? In this video I'm gonna share with you some K-pop opinions, but not just random ones. I'll share opinions that I think some of you are too afraid to say out loud, so I'm ready for you to cancel me. But anyways, whether you agree with me or not, leave your opinion down in the comments so we can have a discussion. Now enough with the talking and let's start. Suga could have killed someone and y'all would still blindingly defended him. We all know what happened with Suga lately. He was caught drunk driving on what we initially were told it was an electric kickboard, and then it was revealed it was actually an electric scooter. But honestly it doesn't matter. Drunk driving is always extremely dangerous. It doesn't matter if it's a car, a scooter or even a fucking bike. Even if you're drunk and just riding a simple bike, you can cause disruption in the streets, and put other vehicles in danger in the attempt to try and avoid hitting you. So the fact that Suga was riding an electric scooter doesn't make things any better, especially considering his high blood alcohol level. There are way too many people that are brushing this off or even making fun of it all. Despite the fact that in the past few months, quite a few people have lost their lives due to drunk driving on scooters in Korea, and this leads me to believe that even if Suga had accidentally killed someone, y'all would still baby him and not hold him accountable. What makes me so mad is that someone like Suga, who's probably a fucking millionaire, could have literally called anybody to take him back home instead of driving while drunk. He most likely has a personal driver that can drive him around wherever he wants, but no. He decided to drive while intoxicated, gambling with his own life and the life of other people around him. And you know, of course he's not the only idol that has driven while drunk, but with the level of fame and influence he has, he's gonna set an awful example, more than anybody else. I genuinely can't comprehend what is leading so many people to defend him, and say things like, oh but he has apologized, and so what? I don't wanna see y'all constantly downplaying the incident. I can't believe we've reached the point of justifying a grown-ass man for drunk driving, and as much as many armies are actually taking this matter seriously, there are still too many people who are joking about such a serious situation that could have possibly turned into a tragedy. You hold English-speaking idols to higher standards and it needs to stop. I'm sorry but this is getting ridiculous. It's becoming more and more evident that K-pop stands are putting more pressure on English-speaking idols and have more expectations when it comes to them compared to other idols. First of all, people tend to assume these idols are more knowledgeable and more informed about what goes on in the world, assuming they are chronically online and will for sure know everything. This is a pretty ridiculous assumption, because even if they speak English, and therefore they can understand a wider range of media and content from all around the world. This doesn't mean you can hold them to higher standards. At the end of the day they're still living in Korea and dedicating most of their time to their idol career. Just like every other idol, I will never understand why you expect them to be wiser and more knowledgeable. Speaking English doesn't automatically make you more cultured and informed. And not speaking English doesn't automatically mean you are an unaware little baby. That's something that depends on each person, regardless of their nationality. There have been so many examples of two idols getting caught up in the same scandal, one idol being from Asia, and the other being from an English-speaking country, and people always get more mad at the English-speaking idol. I can agree that sometimes it makes sense to expect more from idols that are from the West when it comes to certain things. For example saying the N-word, you'd expect an English-speaking person to know they shouldn't be using that word, so I understand why people get more disappointed with English-speaking idols. But when it comes to other topics, it's foolish considering Koreans like clueless little babies that don't know anything, while thinking of English-speaking idols as super knowledgeable and aware of everything that's going on in the world. This mindset seriously needs to change and you can't just decide to hold someone accountable or not based on what language they speak. Most of you don't actually want to see groups and idols improve, after a group or an idol gives a bad performance, it's natural that some people are gonna criticize them which is absolutely fair, because at the end of the day being an idol is a job and we have every right to expect idols to be good at what they do, but it's evident that a lot of people don't actually want to see idols improving, they just want these idols to keep on failing in order to have someone to bully, while hiding behind the excuse of constructive criticism, this is obvious because even when these groups improve, you all still find a way to nitpick them, and it's like you didn't want to admit that they improved, which goes to show that for so many of you, it was never about simply criticizing these idols cause you wanna see them improve. You just wanna have someone to hate because you have fun bullying idols. 
I myself have no problem in criticizing groups if they disappoint me when it comes to certain performances, or if they showcase weak skills, but it's because I genuinely want them to do better and I think us fans have the right to expect good performances from these people, but when I see these groups improving, it makes me genuinely happy, because I'm like finally, they are strengthening their skills and are working hard as they should, I would never wish for someone to keep on doing bad just so I can keep on hating on them, because that's just loser behavior. However, it's becoming more and more clear that so many K-pop stands just want to see these idols fail time and time again, which is really sad to see because it means you don't really care about skills, you just care about fueling your stupid fan wars. You started the hate train against Lee Seraphim, don't try to blame it on someone else, if there is something that I despise, is seeing K-pop stands initiating a hate train and then trying to blame it on external forces, for example a company, a CEO, or whatever. No bestie, you have to take responsibility for what you do, the hate against La Seraphim didn't really start until their Coachella performance, I guess you could say they faced a difficult situation when the Garam scandal happened, but that wasn't really a hate train against La Seraphim, it was mainly against Garam, so the real hate train actually started not too long ago, it began as rightfully criticizing a poor performance, but then it degenerated into straight up cyberbullying and nitpicking the members for every little thing. And you can try and blame this on Minhejin, on another company that felt threatened by Le Seraphim, or whatever, saying it was a smear campaign plotted by someone to taint Le Seraphim's reputation, but we all know that's bullshit, I saw how this hate train started with my own eyes, the criticism becoming more harsh day by day, on Twitter, on Reddit, on YouTube, everywhere, it was K-pop stands that started it, having fun bullying these poor girls who just happened to have delivered a bad performance. And as much as I dislike Min Heejin and I definitely think it's possible for external companies or even broadcasting stations to spread negative news to try and damage an artist, it's too easy blaming others for something that you have done. Now you all are looking for a scapegoat so that you can wash your hands clean of this, denying the fact that you were literally talking trash about these girls like there was no tomorrow. You can try to rewrite history and find someone else to blame all you want, but the truth is that at the end of the day, you are miserable bullies and the fault is all yours. Sakura being Japanese isn't an excuse for her to be a weak vocalist. Speaking of La Seraphim, as much as you all have bullied these girls and said the vilest things about them which is awful, we can't deny some of the criticism was valid. I've heard many people justifying Sakura's lacking singing skills saying she trained as a J-pop idol and J-pop idols are not expected to be good. They are just expected to be fun and entertaining. But this shouldn't be an excuse to use every time Sakura does a poor job. First of all, she isn't the first Japanese idol to debut in K-pop. And let me tell you, there are other Japanese idols that have good vocals. Unlike her, some of them are people that have literally trained as J-pop idols and were in a J-pop group. Just think of Nako. Surely she wasn't the best vocalist in Ice 1, but her skills were miles ahead of Sakura. Hitomi also improved massively during her Eyes 1 career despite starting off as a J-pop idol with mediocre singing skills. Another example is Cherry from Rocket Punch. She also participated on Produce 48 and was a former J-pop idol. Her singing skills are now pretty damn good despite not being a strong vocalist when she first came to Korea. So what I'm trying to say is, it's not about the fact that these girls didn't receive proper training in Japan. It's about the fact that Sakura never improved even when she came to Korea, unlike the others who did. Also, by now Sakura has almost been a K-pop idol longer than she's been a J-pop one. After all she's been in Korea for 6 years, you'd think she would have adapted to this new training system but no. Anyway, I'm not trying to bash her any more than she has already been bashed because it's useless and unnecessary. But I'm just trying to say that y'all have to stop using the J-pop idol excuse every time she messes up. Just admit she's bad, that's it, everybody knows she's a weak vocalist, not just K-pop stands, but also her company, her vocal coaches, her members and Sakura herself, there's no point in denying it, and constantly using the J-pop excuse is just as respectful to those former J-pop idols who have improved massively since they came to Korea. I've need to change their choreographers ASAP, I'm sorry but it must be said, their choreographers and the company are holding them back in terms of dance. I know that I don't necessarily have the strongest dance line out there, but if you look at them covering other groups with more intricate choreos, they absolutely slay, so this goes to show that the girls' dancing skills are not the problem, the choreography is, I feel bad saying this but most of their choreos are quite boring, 
Besides a few catchy parts, the rest is just plain, and it sucks because I know they can all do much more than what they're doing right now. I'm not expecting them to do some hyper-energetic choreos with fucking somersaults, because that doesn't fit their concept and it would look out of place, but there's just so much more that could be done. For example, giving them choreos with more footwork instead of giving them a thousand arm movements. I have to say that their choreography for Heya is one of the worst choreos I've seen this year. The formations are messy as hell and look super awkward. I just feel like they had much better choreos in their rookie years. But what pisses me off the most, is how underutilized the girls are especially during award shows and special performances. Every group has cool and interesting dance breaks, but I've are stuck with doing the same things they do in their usual choreos, resulting in many missed opportunities. As someone who else I've, I'd really like to see their dancing skills being utilized instead of going to waste, especially because they all have very good stage presences and I know for a fact they would devour everything they're given. Okay so this was it. Let me know what you thought of these K-pop opinions that I think most people are too scared to say out loud. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.